Hello, this is a brief video lecture focused on two key concepts, domestication and the Neolithic Revolution. Domestication is defined as the biological modification of plants and animals through human selection. Not natural selection, but human selection. Let's take, for example, the modern cow, the domesticated moo cow. We all know that. Their ancestor was the mighty auroch. This was a massive mega bovine that lived in Ice Age Europe, Western Asia, and the Middle East. At some point, a hunter killed a mommy auroch. It had a calf. That hunter had a choice. Do you kill and eat the calf, or potentially, could you take that calf back to the village to fatten it up for later? In this case, the hunter brought the calf back. Other hunters brought more calves back, and before long you had a herd. But to sustain that herd, you had to breed animals together. Human choice again. Which animals do you breed together? In this case, they chose the smaller animals with better temperaments that were less likely to kill humans. They might have also selected for fat content and milk production. And before long, human selection transformed the mighty wild auroch into the modern domesticated moo cow. We can also take a look at plants. The plant on your bottom left is teosinte. It's a wild grass that grows in the mountains of Mexico. It's the ancestor of corn. Hunters and gatherers in central Mexico used to collect teosinte in the fall. They'd leave their villages and hike up into the foothills, collect the grass seeds, and bring them back for consumption. At some point, these hunters and gatherers decided they were sick and tired of hiking up and down the mountains, so they saved some of their corn to plant for later in their backyards. Which ones did they choose? The larger ones. That teosinte grew in their backyard. They harvested, they ate some, they saved some to plant. Which ones did they plant? The largest ones. And again, human selection transformed wild teosinte that had an ear no bigger than a quarter into the corn that we know today. Here's another hypothetical. Let's say you're out hiking in the forest and you find a dead mommy raccoon. I know that's sad, sad way to start, but in the underbrush, in the leaf litter, you see a little baby raccoon and you realize that if you don't help that raccoon, it's going to die. So you take the raccoon home and you feed it with a little baby bottle and you play with it, you give it a name, and it chases a ball of yarn, and it learns to poop in a cat box. Is that baby raccoon domesticated? No, that raccoon might be partially tamed, but it is not biologically different than wild raccoons. And at one point, that baby raccoon is going to wake up, it's going to realize its wild raccoon potential, and it's going to rip out your carotid artery. Moving on to the Neolithic Revolution. Neo means new. Lithic means stone. The Neolithic Revolution is the new stone age, and it's a period of time where hunters and gatherers transitioned to food production. We used to believe that the Neolithic Revolution and domestication all started in the Fertile Crescent or in the Levant, and it spread, it diffused globally. Archaeological evidence now shows that human beings went through the Neolithic Revolution at different times and at different places. About 12,000 years ago, humans went through the Neolithic Revolution in the Levant. About the same time, people in China along the banks of the Yangtze and the Yellow River were also beginning to experiment with food production. 9,000 years ago in central Mexico, about the same time, in the Peruvian and Bolivian highlands of South America. By 5,000 years ago, Native Americans along the banks of the Mississippi River were also exploring with food production. Anyways, hopefully this helps out. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. We'll see you later.